If this is Brian, <clears throat> something going on with, with my microphones. <clears throat> and there's kind of an echo in the room, and the fans from the laptop is going pretty high. And so if there's this background noise, sorry. Anyway, let's play RQG tonight. We had the uh, baboon ambush. Now, these baboons are not your ordinary baboons. These baboons are uh, sorcerid baboons. And so they are much bigger and stronger and faster than normal baboons. Um, these, also, a couple of them are pretty well experienced. I've got this random experience kind of thing I build in my spreadsheets that, that uh, you know, and some of these have got some, got some skill percentages. Anyway, so... Um, Oh, when we left last. We last left off. They slung sling stones out. A couple of disruptions, and then the three male baboons. There's three male baboons and two female baboons. The two female ba baboons are doing disruption spells from back in the woods. Right? Kind of stuff. <coughs> My goodness. And um, so the three male baboons come charging out. And uh, I got my camera set up, so if you look at the live play, you can see the actual map. Uh, hex board out and that kind of stuff to help, you know, give some <laughs> direction on what's really happening here. So, uh, and the baboons all have mobility on, so they're booking and uh, they engage um, the chariot and one is moving forward while the rest is moving forward, so they engage each other and then the one close on the sand moves up towards. Um, Juchi and David and, and gets and got involved there. So Juchi shooting from back of his horse. I didn't have make any horsemanship rolls because he's just sitting there kind of thing. So probably should have him make do one. Control the horse, shoot, shoot, shoot kind of thing. But he ended up getting off his horse and going and engaging in melee combat because the baboons were all pretty much engaged in melee combat and he didn't want to be shooting into those. Um <clears throat> But it was looking really bad for the party initially. Juju went down after a spear to the arm and a bite to the abdomen. And when I mean, when he went, when I mean down, I mean he was below double in his abdomen and in negative hit points. Um, Orestra lost her arm. Not lost it, but double hit points in, in her arm. And one thrust of the spear, so she's incapacitated and shot kind of stuff. Um, and Miriam and Jarstikos are in the the chariot, and I, he just kind of stops and he's going to attack from over the side. And actually, ends up jumping over because the one baboon back there is actually attacking uh, Miriam, and uh, so he can't get unless he jumps out of there. Cherry, which he does. Uh, he throws a couple of disruptions. Uh, Arrest tries a befuddle once. Um, what else we have going on? Oh, so it's looking pretty bad at the beginning, but then Davin uh, got his strength spell off and he has Blade Sharp 2 off and he's attacking with his rapier. And uh, the baboon dodged the first one, first attack. And at that point, we'll look at these dodge scores and everything else going on. They, this is going to be a TPK, unless I don't let the baboons worry about dodging. And so I, can't, I came and went. I kind of ignored it most of the time. <coughs> but somebody mentioned about, he, he dodged once already, so he's at minus 20. next time, so okay, well, I'll make him dodge to minus 20. But David has that, um, it's not counter magic. Not anti magic, but he's got that sorcery uh, counter magic, sorcery counter armor spells on his rapier, and uh, it's uh, six points. So if it's three points or less, it automatically takes it down. And these baboons had one and two point uh, protections up, so that first one he hit, protection goes down, and they're not wearing any armor, so they got the one point skin stuff. But you know, one point it bypasses. And, he was able to um, 
do a bunch of damage. To one. It was baboon number one. Oh. <clears throat> then we then had to match the um, the anti magic sorcery spell against the sorcery spell. I forgot about that. But sorcery spells on the actual baboon because they even asked, "Hey, does does the baboon shrink down to normal size?" Because I did mention off Aristra, not Aristra, Miriam has dealt with baboons before, so she knows you know baboons size 10, 11. These guys are like 17, 19. They're huge baboons. And they're, these guys are huge. And um, some of them have seen baboon prints before because they've been following them. And these baboons are much bigger than that. So it's getting in front of something's not right here. Um, when he mentioned, like, oh, that's right. So I did uh, the uh, power versus power on the, on the spells thing. And um, I just did the one. But I should, done, should have done every single one. Just gone down the list. Uh, because you know their strength went, the strength has been modified, their constitution has been modified, their size has been modified, and their dex has been modified. Um, I just rolled the ones and ended up bypassing all the case. So I had all the spells come down. I probably shouldn't have done that. I probably just had the first one. I had made a roll first for strength, and then constitution, then size, and then dexterity to see how those <clears throat> would have actually uh, been affected. Neutralize, neutralize magic and neutralize armor. So, um, of course, when his constitution and his size, for that matter, went down, his hit points went down. So the amount of damage he did turned out to be enough after his constitution went down to kill him. So that was dead. Thank goodness this is what I've got. And so there's some more stuff going on. Um, the second baboon went down from, <clears throat> oh, fighting at a restaurant. She got a special... Or a critical. I think it was a critical against a special bite. Special bite, critical parry with her hatchet. Special damage against the head. And she had done she had she had cast slash last round. So um yeah, three D six plus one doubled. <laughs> yeah, took his head right off. Um and so I gang up around the third one, and at this I started rolling. Um, morale rolls and the one cowardly baboon kept making her morale rolls so she stuck around for an extra round or two um, another one failed and took off um, the male the lone male baboon left alive um, surrendered and he's actually fairly chivalrous you know, he's friendly, he's generous um, he's got a couple of these other pretty high, just merciful, modest you know, all those things, also suspicious um, again Pulling Pendragon stuff to give me something to play with on. This is how this character would act. Just having trying to figure out how the runes would make things happen. So that's how I do it. <clears throat> and so, yeah. And then he, he um, rolled a special success on his Hortling language roll. Um, to, you know, I yield. <laughs> and then they have him, well, um, Josh Dacos wanted to lay down, and he's kind of suspicious about that. But he sat down, crossed his legs, put his hands upright, and okay, I'm, I'm here. I can't do anything. What do you want me to do? And he's going to watch these guys, make sure we step in the back. And then some of the other folks, David and Arestra, take off after the spellcasters. One of the spellcasters does um, mobility and takes off. So they're moving 60 hexes around. And even though David's got mad ability on, he's still limited to 48. So that is innocent. Out distancing him. Um, so um, Miriam sends her fetch after that one. And, you know, fetch moves at spirit speed, right? So, and so we have a, like eight rounds of spirit combat as this thing is running off. Um, but that baboon made two special successes and Arrestra, Arrestra, Miriam missed a couple. And so she ended up taking a whole bunch of magic points out. So, in fact, it's just like it's uh, 22 magic points out um so the the okay we're done we're done we're done 
So they do some investigation of the bodies. They've got the standard, you know, beast and earth and water tattoo, you know, rune tattoos and stuff like that. They've also got some sorceress tattoos that David recognizes. And they have this funky symbol. Took a couple rolls for um, David to, to remember. And plus asking, what, what is it? Well, it's the mark of the master kind of thing. And um, there is this creature that David had seen in the mind of one of the cultists back at Marsh Edge that um, when they were interrogating, he saw. And it had it was a black bird kind of thing, wings and a beak kind of deal. <clears throat> and um, you know, this 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 tattoo kind of looks like that kind of a thing, a caricature of it. Um, so they're trying to figure out, you know, what does that really mean? And there's some discussion between me and the player on that because I could not remember exactly how that came out. I just remember that it had come up. I have to go back and dig through my my videos and find out where that is to actually nail down. Okay, this is exactly what happened. Um, well, which reminds me, if you're interested in that kind of thing, there's a live play below in the description. So the whole night, we started a little late because a couple of players were late. That's fine. Um, and then we cut out at you know 11:30 because a couple of them been up all day kind of stuff. So yeah, it was it was a good session. We got all the combat done. Uh, how many melee rounds? I couldn't really say, but uh, Unfortunately, I did start pulling punches with uh, avoiding the dodge. That would have made things a lot longer. <clears throat> but that negate magic and negate armor spells are our kicker. They really are. Happy Damon. Oh, so they got two prisoners and they're going back to clear one. 